Hey, welcome back. We've got a Beretta that isn't. This is a Langdon Tactical Elite LTT. Coming up next on GB Guns. So, coming in a standard Beretta case with uh, the LTT marks on there. This is a custom Beretta 92, if you will. You may have may recall if you've been with the channel for any length of time that uh, while in the army, especially as an armor, I wasn't a fan of the Bread 92. Well, not long ago, I had a chance to try one of these. And at first offering, I was kind of ho-hum about it and said, yeah, you know, I'm not really a fan, but I'll give it a try. I loved it. The thing shot great. And I, there was, <laughs> I couldn't resist. So I had to get my hands on one to bring in for review to show you all. We'll go over the gun, of course, coming up. We do have three magazines, two in the case, one in the gun. We have our bread on lock. And then back behind the foam, we have trigger bar and spring, probably the originals. Bread is warranty. Bread of NRA joining the M9A3 manual, which, you know, this is not quite an M9A3, but we'll go over where it's similar and where it's different, and you Beretta fans will definitely be able to point out some things to me that uh, I won't know, because it has been years since uh, I was messing around with those 92 FSs in the Army. Let's get the case out of the way. Take a look at the gun. This thing is handsome for sure. <laughs> As I always start off by showing clear, magazine pops right out. We do get enough of an ejection kick there. Not quite a full flying out of the gun because of the anti-corrosion uh, coating that is on these magazines. Witness windows on the back at 5, 10, 15. Kind of what we're used to on uh, older European style. And of course, clean inside there. So just looking at it, initial thoughts, you can see that a lot's been done to this. This is a different slide and frame than your standard 92. We're gonna start at the front as always and uh, work our way around. So you notice the profile here is a little bit different because we actually have a spot for light on here. It's been flattened out and there's a rail slot. You might also notice that there is a target crown recessed on the slightly shorter barrel that helps it uh, get out of the holster a little bit faster. The barrel length that is and the target crown, of course, to preserve the rifling and aid in accuracy. The fiber optic front sight is also different because these are actually cut and dovetailed for sights. So you can finally change sights on your 92. Moving down, we've got serrations up front not very common on berettas at all welcome addition nice stainless barrel here that's got uh, I believe a serrate coating on it to uh, accent and look better then on the front of the trigger guard it's squared off and one thing i noticed immediately upon handling this because in the army the 92 part of why i didn't like it was it was always chewing up my knuckle Right there, I was getting, uh, on ARs, I call it patrol knuckle. On pistols, it's just from getting chewed on. Well, if you take a look up close, we'll see if I can get the camera to show it for us. They've radius the trigger guard. There you go, you can see the light on there. Not only do you have a radius through here, but a radius on this edge, which makes it a lot more comfortable to handle, and then the steel trigger. This trigger, by the way, is incredible. So in single action with the hammer back, comes to the wall, breaks. That's it. Reset is still longer, but the spring is pushing you to the click point and then breaks again. And although that travel there is, I mean, it's still short, but it's, you know, not as super short as say like a Walther Q5 match or something. The fact that the spring is pushing you to it almost makes it easier. It's incredible. And then watch this for the double action. It just rolls right through. There's no discernible stack at all. 
and that lets you pull very smoothly. This is the decocker model. Decock on both sides. We've got some radius here to help with the trigger reach. Speaking of that reach, you notice these grips are very thin, which helps the gun feel a bit thinner in hand. And the texturing here goes all the way up, which is nice for proper grip. You're getting some actual adhesion, some friction point on this thumb and on uh, the joint underneath your firing hand. Front strap, strap is nicely checkered, vertical and horizontal. We've got beveling of the magazine well. We get the lighting in there to make mag insertions easy. No lanyard loop on that spring housing, which is very nice and very welcome. I mean, unless you're gonna need to tether, lanyard loops get in the way more than the help. That same stippling checkering on the back strap. Notice the hammer is also different. This is a lighter weight hammer. Moves a little bit faster. Right side of the gun, we've got our decocker up on here. Just an overall very handsome gun. Looks very nice. Next, we'll field strip and take a look at inside the gun. Now, if you've not ever field stripped a Brennan 92 or seen how they come apart, they are slightly different because you notice the barrel here travels briefly with the slide before unlocking. So the locking mechanism is a little bit different. We'll I'll take a look at that in a second. To field strip, you're gonna be pushing on this button here, which by the way, serves as a great reference point for your trigger finger when you're not firing. The other side of it, this lump here, a reference point for the support hand, which is excellent. So you push back on that, which you'll see brings this pin up, rotate that down and your slide comes right off. That easy, no need to pull the trigger. Take a look inside our frame. Nice all metal construction. This is obviously well oiled, lubricated, very cleanly done. Our guide rod is solid steel, which adds some nice front heaviness to the gun that helps keep the muzzle in place through recoil, reduce your flip and get you back on target quicker. Non-captured recoil spring, which I appreciate, though yes, you do run the risk of losing this. It also means that it's very easy to tune the gun to your desired load. Now we're gonna pop here. That's our locking block. And we see we've got a nice feed ramp. Well contoured there. We'll take a look at our chamber support, as always using our Nosler match. You can see we've got room for the extractor on the right side, not quite support underneath the bottom. So it is unsupported underneath there. For those who aren't sure what to, uh, why that matters, it's not advised that you shoot uh, reloads in not fully supported chambers, just because if you have an overpressure, it's gonna, the case rupture will blow out there. So. Some people say it's not important. Some people say it's important. I would think that if you were to buy a gun of this caliber that you would, <laughs> caliber, I really like that pun there, you would not be using reloads. Take a look inside our slide, which by the way is marked with the Elite LTT on there. Looks standard Breton 92. Very nicely made, as we expect from Breton. Now these are produced in cooperation between Beretta and Langdon Tactical. Langdon is who I met that got me started and interested in all of these. Um, very impressive, nice guy. Very impressive gun to shoot. Um, and you can tell the guy's got his uh, passion figured out and uh, has basically created a, if you will, factory custom gun. This way, uh, the gun's coming known from respected builder, backed by Beretta, 
and not a franking gun like what uh, some folks have been doing with their Burden 92s, trying to get it to a gun that shoots nicely and at a modern rate. Did forget to mention earlier that uh, we do have an extended magazine release you see there. Travel is rather short. I wouldn't be too worried about it bumping anything, especially if it's in a proper holster because it's got to travel the backside and it would extend there. So it's not going to be pushable if something is supporting on the other side. So that is our Elite LTT from Langdon Tactical Technologies that will be taken out to the range soon. Of course, uh, full mag plus one, I don't expect any issues. We'll run the what's for dinner test. I think we're currently sitting at still a low of 65 grain and a high of 165 grain. Hollow points, full metal jackets, brass, aluminum, and steel case. And then we'll run some of that uh, nozzle match grade through there and see what kind of groups we can get with these sights. If you take a look at the sight picture, you can see plenty of space on the sides of that front sight post that helps in knowing where you are on the target um, some people prefer that some people prefer without but the neat thing is that with the, these dovetailed you can now swap that and actually have options i also want to point out the serrations here that help cut down on glare and that we have that nice solid 90 degree front edge to be able to rack off of a belt or a table or something if you want to do one-handed the top of the slide here has been flattened out too to clear and make that even easier. Pretty excited about this gun. I feel privileged to have it in hand and uh, am really looking forward to getting it out on the range. Let me know what your thoughts are. I'd like to hear from the Beretta crowd out there what you've done to your 92 or what you'd like to do and uh, what you think of this guy coming out of the box complete with so many enhancements. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the range.